Thanksgiving games. Uh, started off terribly as we heard that the Steelers and Ravens game was going to get moved to Sunday. That might even get moved further down the week now as Lamar Jackson was diagnosed with COVID-19 yesterday, which is a tough break for the league. Uh, and that game was going to be the the marquee matchup on Thanksgiving. And obviously we didn't get to see that, but um, the other two earlier games sort of made up for it in terms of the expectations were so low and there's lots of scoring. So at least you can uh, be happy with that. But the, the first game, the Lions and the Texans, I'm like Deshaun Watson, he was a difference maker. He's an incredible quarterback and he's just, I, I think I mentioned on the previous podcast, they just haven't been able to protect him and he has been underrated because some of the other quarterbacks around his age are on better teams and performing at a similar level, but he does so much for this Houston Texans team. And then uh, they also benefited from some turnovers. So they had only had five turnovers through 11 weeks this year, and they got three in the first quarter pretty much, which really swung the tide of the game for them. And then of course there was this beautiful backyard football play where running back had had a stretch to the right about three seconds he hadn't reached the line of scrimmage (laughs) a little toss back to the quarterback love it a little flea flicker and finds will fuller wide open brutal for me i'm going up against deshaun in fantasy this week so that was crushing but it was fun to see so i i can't be too upset and then the late game cowboys washington football team (laughs) Joe Buck, Troy Aikman on the call, super excited, ramping it up. And it was a great game through three quarters, and then the Cowboys fell apart. Andy Dalton got picked. He basically threw the ball right at the defensive lineman who was coming to sack him, and it got returned for a touchdown. And then terrible fake punt run by the Cowboys. And now the Washington football team is in the driver's seat of the NFC East at 4-7. and seven. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Which is ridiculous to even say (laughs) oh divisions and sports yeah i they need to definitely take a look at how teams make the playoffs when they don't even have a 500 record because it's such an embarrassment to the league that you could potentially have the baltimore ravens who were the second best or the number one seed last year but the baltimore ravens missing the playoffs in the afc and then having this bum washington team hosting a playoff game yeah i mean the (laughs) whole point of the playoffs is to have the best play the best and you sharpen it out and find the number one team and divisions are like a necessary evil with geography and the fact that not every team can play every team equal amount of times and be at their best because they'd be flying all over the place but i feel like with football having a 16 game season that wisdom holds a little less true and there should be something they could possibly do to fix that if it's as bad as sub 500 teams regularly making the playoffs with like amazing teams not getting in that's not why i want to see as a fan of any sport yeah absolutely all right i'm gonna move on to my weekend preview i've selected a couple of games that I'm excited to watch. I mean, the first of which would be the Steelers and Ravens game, which may not end up happening on Sunday. There's no line for it right now because the Ravens facility is shut down uh, until Sunday. So it's most likely that they won't get to play, which sucks because now the Steelers, who already had dealt with COVID issues earlier in the season when they tried to play the Titans and it got moved back a week, now again have to worry about getting their game postponed and somehow they're still undefeated so it's actually been pretty impressive to see from them what is that, uh, mean? that is it going to be like a back heavy end right before the playoffs well, they're gonna have to play a bunch of games somehow the nfl's been able to finagle the schedule so far this year so with that titans game earlier it just got moved to the steelers bye week so they basically didn't have a bye week this season and then this game it'll probably get played on a Monday or a Tuesday. And then I I don't, the NFL is going to have to deal with this COVID issue because at this point, there's no more bye weeks as we get down the final stretch. So I think what's going to happen is they're going to have to add 
an extra week to the schedule in order to fit in some of these games that get postponed down the stretch. But either way, it's going to be tough for the Steelers. And so it makes that number one seed for them even more important because only one team gets a bye in the playoffs this year as opposed right. to two the, all the previous years. Yeah. The next game that I was looking at uh, is the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Chiefs are favored by three and a half right now. And uh, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes versus Tom Brady. And it's an afternoon game, so Brady won't be past his bedtime. He'll put on a good show, hopefully. Uh, And the biggest thing here is just I think it's going to be a shootout because – Brady struggles when teams are able to put some pressure on him from their front seven, and the Chiefs' defense is lacking a bit in that regard. And then on the other side, no defense can stop the Chiefs and Mahomes. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. The over-under set at 56 right now, which is pretty high. So it should be an exciting game. Uh, I'm going to pick the Chiefs for this game just because it's hard to pick against Mahomes. And I think that their defense just makes big plays when they need to make big plays and they'll be able to win by a touchdown here. So you think it'll come down to the difference between the teams or the difference between Mahomes and Brady? I think it'll be Mahomes and Brady and Brady makes the right reads, but he's still in that stage where the Tampa Bay offense still isn't a hundred percent clicking and they may figure it out by the playoffs. But right now playing the Super Bowl favorite Kansas city chiefs, He's going to have some, he's still going to, there's still going to be some growing pains there. And so I think just the difference between him and Mahomes, who has reached that kind of early peak Brady quality, where he and his receivers are all on the same page and he knows exactly where to put it. And if you drop back into coverage and everything's covered, he's just, okay, I'm going to scramble for 11 yards first down, keep the chains moving. So uh, I just think the difference there is what's going to be the outcome of this game. You got me excited to hear about it on Monday. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be an exciting one for sure. Uh, The final game, it's not as exciting as the first two project to be, but it is really important for the AFC playoff picture, is the Titans and the Colts going at it for uh, number one seed in the AFC South. And right now the uh, Colts are in the lead because they beat the Titans two weeks ago in their previous matchup. And that game just came down to special teams. I mean, the the Titans had a muffed punt and then a missed kick, and it really swung the tide in that game. The biggest thing, again, will be can the Titans get pressure on Phillip Rivers because when Phillip Rivers has time, this Colts offense has looked really electric. But if there's any sort of pressure on him, then he seems to fold. And then at the same time, the Colts' defense – since Den- Darius Leonard's been back, have been great, and they just need to be able to shut down Derrick Henry. Uh, and I think they're going to do that. So I'm going to pick the Colts here. They're minus three in the spread, uh, and I'm going to pick them to cover that spread in this game. So it should be a decent weekend. Uh, the last thing I got to talk about is my fantasy fantasy sleeper for this weekend, and I have Wayne Gallman of the New York Football Giants going up to Cincinnati, and uh, he has been on a tear recently, and I believe he's going to put up some major points, and I hope so, because that's who I picked up on the waiver wire this week. <laughs> All right, we'll check back in on that Monday. Yeah. All right. That was a good wrap up there. <laughs>